we have been talking about Turing machine programming techniques and in this lecture we will be seeing another example where we will see how we can program our Turing machine in order to make it achieve a particular task or make it recognize a particular language. Alright, so here we have an example which says build a Turing machine to recognize the language 0 power n, 1 power n, 0 power n. So this means that the number of zeros should be equal to the number of ones that follows and that the number of ones should be equal to the number of zeros that follows. So this is the kind of language that we need to design. So we know that this language is not a context free language and we cannot use a pushtar automata to design this language. And why is that? We have already discussed about this when we studied about the pumping lemma for context free languages and we have proved that this language cannot be designed using a pushdown automata and hence it is not a context free language. So if you have not watched that lecture, you can watch it. It is the first example that we discussed in pumping lemma for context free languages. Alright, so since we cannot design this using pushdown automata, as it is not a context free language, now we will try to design this or build it using a Turing machine. So we know that our Turing machines are much more powerful than pushdown automatas. So let's see how we can build a Turing machine to recognize this language. Alright, so what I'm going to do in this lecture is that I am not going to design the complete Turing machine for this, but I will give you an idea of how we can program this Turing machine using some of the Turing machine that we have already designed before and we will see how we can use that Turing machine which we have already designed in order to perform this task. Alright, so let's see how we can do that. So here is the idea. We already have a Turing machine to turn 0 power n, 1 power n to x power n, y power n and to decide that language. So if you remember, we have already designed a Turing machine in one of the previous lecture where it was made to recognize this kind of language, 0 power n, 1 power n. And what it was doing was that it was turning this 0 power n, 1 power n to x power n, y power n. So let's just take a look at that. So here is the example that I was talking about, the Turing machine which recognizes the language 0 power n, 1 power n. So if you remember, we have already discussed this. If you have not watched it, you can watch it. It is the second example that we have discussed in Turing machines. And here what we were doing was that when we have a language of this form 00001111 which is of this form, the Turing machine what it was doing was it was looking at this first zero in the tape and it was replacing it with x and then it was going to the other end and searching for a 1. So if it finds a corresponding 1 for each zero then it is replacing that 1 with y and then it was coming back and searching for the next zero replacing it with x and then going to the other end searching for the corresponding one and replacing it with y and so on. So it was done until all the zeros were replaced with x and all the ones were replaced with y. So we see that 0 power n, 1 power n is replaced with x power n, y power n. So that is what we see here and this was the algorithm that we developed in order to do this. And this is the Turing machine that we designed in order to perform that particular task that I was talking about. So here we see we had the tape and all the zeros are replaced with x and all the ones were replaced with y. And if it is not finding a corresponding one for particular zero then it shows that that particular string does not belong to the language. So this is what we were doing. So coming back to the example that we were discussing, so we want to design language of this form 0 power n, 1 power n, 0 power n and we already have a Turing machine that turns the 0 power n, 1 power n to x power n, y power n. We already saw that. Now what we will do is that we will use this Turing machine as a subroutine. So that means that we will use this Turing machine and we will modify it in some way and we have required we will combine two or more of this particular Turing machine that we just saw in order to perform this particular task. Now let's see how we can do that. So here are the steps. So the first step it says we have this string of the form 0 power n 1 power n 0 power n. So we have 5 number of zeros followed by 5 number of ones followed by 5 number of zeros. So 
it is of this form. So it lies in this language and we need to make the Turing machine accept this language. So how we can do it? What we will do is that we will just consider the first part of this string. That means the 0 power n, 1 power n. Up to here I will consider. We will just leave the rest of the zeros as it is for now. So we will just consider this part of the string. And we know that this part of the string can be recognized using the Turing machine that I just showed you before, which was able to turn 0 power n, 1 power n to x power n, y power n. So using that particular Turing machine, we will convert this 0 power n, 1 power n to x power n, y power n. That means all the zeros are replaced with x and all the ones are replaced with y. So we saw how we can do this in the lecture that I already showed you. And we may have to modify that Turing machine a little bit because in that Turing machine what it was doing was that after this last one that it found, it was searching for a blank symbol. But here we don't have a blank symbol but we have a zero that follows. So you will have to modify that Turing machine a little bit so that after this last one you find a zero but not a blank symbol. So that is not a big task, you can do it easily. So after doing that, we see that all the zeros are replaced with x and all the ones are replaced with y using the previous Turing machine. And this is the kind of strings that we have now in our tape or the kind of symbols that we have in our tape. These zeros, we did not do anything with them, so they are same like this. Now what we will do in step 2 is that we will build a similar Turing machine to recognize y power n, 0 power n. So what that means is that now what we will do is we will consider this part of the string. In the beginning we considered these two parts. Now we will consider these two parts, the second and the third part. And we see that in the second part we have y's and in the third part we have zeros. So you can build a similar Turing machine which will recognize y power n, 0 power n because we have y's over here and zeros over here. Alright, so I hope you're getting it because in the first part we use the Turing machine for recognizing 0 power n, 1 power n for this particular part and we convert it into x and y's. Now we will design a similar Turing machine. The only thing is that instead of recognizing zeros and ones, now it will recognize y's and zeros. y's and zeros. It is for this part. So we can see that the first Turing machine will take care of these first two parts and then the second Turing machine will take care of these two parts and then we can recognize that particular language. So the third step is build the final Turing machine by combining these two smaller Turing machines together into one larger Turing machine. So this is how you do it. First you have one Turing machine for 0 power n, 1 power n. So this part will be done and it will be converted to something like this. Now the second Turing machine that you design will recognize y power n, 0 power n. These y's and zeros. And then glue the two Turing machines together or combine them together so that together they will recognize this whole kind of string. So all the three parts 0 power n, 1 power n and 0 power n will be taken care of it. So this is how you can program or modify the Turing machine that you already have in order to perform some kind of other task. So what we did was that we used the Turing machine as a subroutine. The previous small Turing machine that we had, we used it as a part for this larger Turing machine that we designed. So we took two of those and we modified a little bit and then it is able to perform this kind of task. So I am not going to draw the Turing machine and show it to you but you have the idea of how to do it and you can try how you can do this. So this is how you can program the Turing machine by using it as a subroutine. If you already have a Turing machine, which is performing a particular task, you can use it as a subroutine to perform some larger task by using it as a part of the larger Turing machine or by combining it with it. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you with the next one.